We got married uh, six years ago. And we lived in a caravan. Well, we still live in a caravan. And we started to build the, this house two years this June, I think it is. Decided to start to build it. Done it all myself so far, in between the uh, jobs, you know, the farm work there. Roger could walk, he came around the farm with me when he was just half walking and half crawling. And the first time he came out, so I went to bury you, but it just died. And then I dug the hole and it was dragging the you towards the hole, and he blurted out mighty poorly. And he kept repeating this all the while till I buried her. This is the first time he'd ever heard him saying these words, it was mighty poorly. Uh, another time, we went down to the vet with this, to take this ewe. She couldn't lamb herself, so we took her to the vet. And um, we all went, just Stuart and me. And um, Mr. Maddox said she's got to be operated on. You know, you've got to cut her open. So um, Roger dying to go in, of course, to see what was inside uh, Mr. Maddox's clinic, whatever you call it. And he was watching him operating on this ewe. And, then he, and I just walked out and I didn't say a word to Roger. I didn't want to uh, put him off. What for? I said, and he just said, where are you going, Mummy? I said, oh, I'm just going to look after Stuart. And he just carried on watching Mr. Maddox operating on this you. And then he saw the lambs being born, didn't he? Yeah. Mr. Maddox shaking the lambs, you know, to get him the life into them. And Roger was pleased to death, you know, he's catching all of these wet, slimy lambs. Oh, he's alive, he says. <laughs> so overjoyed, you know. And I saw Roger one day chasing a cockerel. And he did catch him in the end. Caught him by the wing, I think it was. And he came to me. Mummy, come on, he said. We've got to kill this cockerel. Chop his head off, he said. And then we feather him. Then we put him in the oven. <laughs> so, didn't worry him, you know. He's got to kill it first, you know, because he likes chicken. He understood what to do, to do with a, a bird, you know, to eat it. It just doesn't come out of a deep freezer somewhere. You, comes from the, you know, out of an egg first, and then you, uh, you kill the thing to eat it. It sounds a cruel, vicious world, but that's how it is, and he understands it. The it reason he could uh, catch his cockerel was so easy was he used to be always feeding them. The cockerels would come right up to him, you know, and he'd be able to stroke them and everything. <laughs> Oh, what? 
You come to them, Stuart? Yeah. You come to them? Yes? Um, Twenty. Twenty, is there? No, oh, it's a... Uh, black. Black one, is it? Yeah. And what else? White. White. White one. White. Yeah. Good job, shut the gate. Right? She was not showing very happy in car, isn't it? No, many of them. Good day. No. Pretty. No, no, no. You're all right, are you? The only thing I think a child misses in the country is uh, mixing, companionship with other children. That's why I, st I started to take Roger when he was Pretty. around three to play school. I thought, you know, I've got to give him 12 months to get him used to mixing with other people. Was it very strange? I stayed with him for a half an hour for the first time. I've never had any trouble with Roger. Then Stuart was about 12 months old then. I used to take him with me, but now this, this summer, he was hanging back when I was leaving Roger there. So I said, right, I'll, I'll try you for once, see what, what happens, because he's a very a child that clings to, you know. They said they had no trouble with him at all. I stayed, I think, for the first time for about an hour with him. And he just thoroughly enjoyed himself. When they're in playgroup, you notice they don't say a lot. They want to find out, I suppose, what the other child is like. And they just watch and listen. I suppose it's like a young animal, in a sense. It's exactly the same for a sheep or an any animal to come to that. You've got to sort out what you've got in your area. For a child, I suppose, it's exactly the same. They have to get to know the other children first before they'll speak and, and have a good look around to see what is there. It's surprising how quickly the young children do know that Tuesday mm. and Thursday mornings are play school mornings. It's play school today and how much longer, and of course the morning seems endless for them until it's time to come. It's a long time from six o'clock till half mm. past nine. And they're, they just uh, can't wait. <laughs> and rather embarrassing for us when they don't want to go home. <laughs> this has happened. Yeah. We have to coax mm. them. And... Um, but still, I think it pleases the mothers, and they know that um, they're happy. Being farm children, the parents are often too busy to take them out to meet other children, and this is the only place where they can contact other children, and, where, and it is a situation where they can play freely together. <laughs> other children. We feel that this is where we do give a service, helping them to make friends, to mix, to share, to learn to play together, which they do, and um, knock the corners off each other. <laughs> It's 
it's rather difficult to adapt to playing with another child and to giving and taking. They, they, they haven't had to do that. And if they continue coming, by the time they're ready for school, I think they are adjusted. They, they settle. Stuart is fi finding out the different things by looking. He watches the other children. He uses his hands and he investigates in his own little way. His, his, um, you can tell by his expressions that there's a lot going on in his mind. <laughs> At the moment he, he just is content with watching and looking and feeling and investigating. The other children, although not many in number, may seem an awful lot to little Stuart. But there is one familiar face, and that's his brother. If he can see his big brother, that's it. He feels, there's somebody I know. There's something familiar to me. And um, Roger, being such a lovable older brother, is just what Stuart needs. It's just that little comfort until he he feels more familiar in the surroundings. In their play, they are, at times, a little rough with each other, but we feel, well, this is all part of life, and they learn to accept it, they learn to fight their own little battles. They do learn to play happily with each other, really. There does seem to be this sense of devotion between these children who live on farms and in isolated places. When they're at home, they can play, but it isn't playing with other children, which is so important. Perhaps Stuart looks bored, but he hasn't seen a lot of children in a group together. So it's fascinating to him to see them, to hear them.
them find their own way round. Don't expect them to do anything. Don't say, let's do this, let's do that. Just leave them quietly. Maybe you think, perhaps they are bored. Should they be doing something else? But they'll come and talk. And it's obvious from their conversation that they have been acutely conscious of something different. And they will come and say, can I crayon? Can we paint today? Because they've discovered these things. And I think that they are, they are learning because it's something new. I think it's a good sign when the children at the end of the morning look tired, really tired, in their own little ways. They've worked, they've thoroughly enjoyed themselves and it's a lovely weariness. It isn't a miserable tiredness. I do feel sorry for some children whose fathers go out in the morning, half past eight. They don't know where he's gone, what he's doing. All they know is that he's away all day and they're to be home in the evening for tea. And that's it as far as Daddy goes. Yeah. But with these children, I think they feel needed and they feel wanted and they're allowed to do things they're allowed to help gather the sheep in feed the pigs collect the eggs there's always something to do so how people can say that they are bored one thing we notice since they've been to playgroup is that when they're out playing together they seem to talk a lot to each other they're quiet today as you know because of the cameras but usually you can't get a word in it, you know, they're very chatty children when they're playing together, you know, you can creep up around the corner and uh, they are talking away. Come on, Stuart, you do it this way. And Stuart, they're getting in the soil, you know, loading up their little toys. Some um, words coming out that you know, I thought they knew. <laughs> I'm going to mention that, have you? <laughs> playing together or if they're helping me if I'm baking cakes oh mummy why are you doing this and mummy why are you doing that and always asking questions why 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 oh this is hard work to explain everything and they want to know why uh, why calves have to have milk or why um, lambs have to have milk or why we have to give the, the, the cattle hay um, working the sheep here what's the drench for and why are you doing this Daddy, and when we get up to the garden, digging the garden in the spring, he was helping me to do that, and 
Asking all manner of questions then he was. Always asking you why. It's a very big question, why? We sometimes think about the boys' future, what they're going to do. But then we think they stand as good a chance in the country as in the town. A lot of country boys have been into college and have come back out to the country to be auctioneers and all that sort of thing. At least in the country they can always plenty of food if things do get hard. Well, I went uh, away to college, to tech. And I was away from home for six years. But I still came back to the country. I couldn't stick it in the towns. It got me. You know, I'd had enough. You, you get the sheep. Huh? I'll take the tractor across and you get the sheep. Okay. Take off here. What about Daddy? Hold on. Somebody said to me, somebody give me a million pounds to go and live in the tower and say, I'll give you a farm, which would I take? I'd take the farm first. Bring that one, Roger. Freedom. 